There are those that just want to be left alone, and those that just won't leave them alone. Which one are you? The Ernest Hancock Show. The Matrix is a system, Neil. That system is our enemy. But when you're inside, you look around, what do you see? Businessmen, teachers, lawyers, carpenters, the very minds of the people we are trying to save. But until we do, these people are still a part of that system, and that makes them our enemy. You have to understand, most of these people are not ready to be unplugged. And many of them are so inert, so hopelessly dependent on the system, that they will fight to protect it. Were you listening to me, Neo? Or were you looking at the woman in the red dress? I was... Look again. Freeze it. What are they? Sentient programs. Anyone we haven't unplugged is potentially an agent. Inside the Matrix, they are everyone and they are no one. They are guarding all the doors, they are holding all the keys, which means that sooner or later, someone is going to have to fight them. Someone. I won't lie to you, Neil. Every single man or woman who has stood their ground, everyone who has fought an agent has died. But where they have failed, you will succeed. Why? Their strength and their speed are still based in a world that is built on rules. Because of that, they will never be as strong or as fast as you can be. What are you trying to tell me? That I can dodge bullets? No, Neo. I'm trying to tell you that when you're ready, you won't have to. You won't have to. I, I, that's where I'm at. I don't think we're going to have to. We're not going to... It's just the absurdity is so overwhelming. It gets to the point that you don't even have to have anybody point it out. i give you an example. Michael Moore goes to Obama and says, return your Nobel Peace Prize. You know, after you approve military strikes in Libya, um, your Nobel Peace Prize material, I was amazed that he got it just even after uh, he didn't pull out of Iraq and Afghanistan like his whole campaign was about. So I'm going, okay, you know, this, and it, it brings up a scene with Robert De Niro and Dustin Hoffman from Wag the Dog. And at the very end of the movie, they were talking about, uh, you know, this fake war that they kind of produced in order to get support behind a troubled incumbent president that they got him to win the election because, you know, we're at war with, it was a fake war, but they uh, manufactured the appearance of a war. And Dustin Hoffman's character goes, you know, should we go for the Nobel Peace Prize? And De Niro says, you know, you mean for, for the symmetry of it? <laughs> you know, and he goes, well, there wasn't even a war. And he goes, all the more the accomplishment. You know, this is how they're thinking. I'm just, I'm, wow. We have to be able to recognize this and see the, the if not hilarity, certainly the tragedy of this. Obama administration, there are no current plans to ask Congress for Libya funds. I, I, I think I was actually drinking something. That's why I got, you made me spit all over my monitor. You know, it was a logo that I, uh, a graphic I put up for that. Because I think I was actually, I really, I went, whoa. And I almost, just all over my monitor, I'm going, there's got to be something. You made me spit on my monitor and looked up a Google image. And sure enough, there was something. But I just, I, I, I can't believe they even make these kinds of statements. We're already, I had Dennis Kucinich on talking about, uh, we're already into this half a billion dollars. Just, I mean, just, just, I mean, right out of the gate. Among the features of America's military involvement in Libyan airspace that has given some lawmakers pause, the cost. At a time when belt tightening is a domestic political rage, writing checks to help support a no-fly zone that half a world away has, for some critics, raises the question of President Barack Obama's budget priorities. Now, this is Huffington Post, so of course they, you know, left-leaning, they're going to give it kind of a nice spin. You know, I'm like, wow, man. A couple days ago, we had Phyllis Bennison. She's the director of New Internationalism Project 
uh, with the Institute for Policy Studies. And, you know, New Internationalism Project, well, that tells you where they're going right there. Their whole thing was, is, is if we can redistribute the wealth of all the rich people around the planet, then, you know, the poor people will go from 3 to $4 a day. And they'll get clean water or something. And it's just... I and who administers this? How do you collect the tax? We got into that. Well, if it's just a small fraction of a global tax on transactions, yada 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 yada, they want a global tax. And of course, it'll be just like the income tax. It'll start off at half a percent or percent, and then it, you know you saw what happened. You lived what happened. You know what happened. This, and you know what's going to happen. So I'm like, okay, it's always good to have them get on record. You know, bring it on, bring it on, bring it on. I wanted to talk about this one thing. This is, uh, I put up the graphic, meet the new boss. And Sierra, she's young enough, she doesn't understand what that means. But I, I know a lot of people do. It was one of the the very first songs that we used in the first Ron Paul Revolution uh, YouTubes that we did four years ago. And what it was is... Uh, the Who did this, and we won't be fooled again. Meet the new boss, same as the old boss. So here it comes. Glenn Beck contemplates starting his own channel. Now, his viewership has plummeted quite a bit, but he has a lot of subscribers to his own personal whatever that he'll take with him. And you got a million people paying a couple of bucks a month. You know, that's like some money. So, you know, this is this is what's going on. Now, I give this... As a good example, something else I wanted to talk about. The Alice Shrug thing had been in the works for weeks. I mean, I just, you know, been hammering on this, kind of finally, eventually we got it taken care of. And uh, once we got a commitment from the theater and from the studio that they were going to work a deal and we're going to get it here in Phoenix, well, then we kept you apprised of exactly what was happening as it happened. Now, it kept evolving. It was going to be one day that we were just going to buy the theater for a show on a Friday night. Then it turned in, okay, well, we'll go ahead and run it all that day. Then now it's turned into we're going to run it for a week, and it may extend even uh, into May. So it's just, you know, it keeps going, and they demonstrate there's a lot of interest in it. We've already done that, so they start extending it. And it goes, so I let people know, okay, it's going to go on sale tomorrow, 11 a.m. Ah, well, the, that's just when they, they told me that's when they opened up. Well, that's just when the manager gets there and started doing the schedule. All right, well, 115. No, that's when he submits it to district manager and they got to approve and everything. Okay, you know, 5 o'clock and about 4.15 or so is when you could actually buy tickets. Then they extended the days and the showings. And, and Harkins has other theaters in Texas, so they took this opportunity to expand it into Texas too. So what we did here in Phoenix got them in Texas. So it's just, you know, this kind of evolved. Should I tell you? Should I wait till it's all done, it goes up, and you're not prepared and didn't know that you could do it and go buy? That we even gave it option, you know, give us the money, and when it's open, we'll go down there and run, get them, make sure everybody gets them that wants them. Because initially they said they weren't going to be available online because it was going to be a purchased kind of day and that it would be our responsibility and they wouldn't do it through their system well then they changed their mind okay they're going to do it through their system then they do it. so we refunded all the money and said look yeah you, you know just do it online right here's the link go take care of it yourself now i got some even hey this is not that they didn't you know you know get it straight and so i'm going look man should i even tell you well, the reason the Glenn Beck thing comes up, when I was at a party uh, Saturday, it was Jim Sharp's birthday, and uh, there's a gentleman there, his name is, I don't know if he wants me to give his name, but he was one of the producers of Charles when he was over at Clear Channel, and he's uh, IT savvy, and he used to have his own website, the news kind of thing. It wasn't really like Freedom's Phoenix, but you know, it's kind of in that genre. And what happened is he did very well, and he knows all the little tricks of the trade and so on. He's, uh, you know, in that conservative bent. And Glenn Beck and Rush Limbaugh and Sean Handy, all these guys had their own IT guys that do this. And they had him come over and help build their uh, websites for him years ago. And do so he is in the know. Well, he was telling me Saturday, you know, this Glenn Beck thing, he's going, look, let me tell you what's really going on. His contract's going to come up, and a lot of this PR and so on is to bring attention to this because I think he's going to take his subscribers and go and create his own media. And I go, really? All right, cool. We'll wait and see. But I didn't say anything because then it's just, you know, our, you know, so it'll come out. Yep, here it comes, New York Times. Should I have said something? You know, it's, you know, it's hard to say. 
You know, I, what I do is things that we can personally, until it's confirmed or someone else does it, or if it's of importance that you know ahead of time, then I'll tell you. Well, we did on the Atlas Shrug thing. Worked out. Now we're all going. Most of the people are going to the 850 show on Friday the 15th here. Now it's playing uh, matinees all the way 11 o'clock in the morning, and it's extended. So it's. Uh, I, I just want you to know what we're doing. We have a staff meeting tonight, and we're going to start talking about having an insider kind of list for Freedoms Phoenix that you guys subscribe to. We'll talk about it more tomorrow. Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what readers of freedomsphoenix.com get every day. Readers of freedomsphoenix.com are constantly provided the information that detail the real news between the lines of propaganda about government policies and the true relationship we all have with coercive governments. Learn the true condition of our economy, innovations and technological breakthroughs in energy, health, computer science, and space travel. Learn the truth well before it's admitted to in the lamestream media, the media that is so last century. Corporate media has evolved into nothing more than distributors of government propaganda, but we now have a fantastic alternative. FreedomsPhoenix.com provides constant news updates on the issues that affect our lives in the most important ways. Our liberty and our property are under constant attack, and FreedomsPhoenix.com provides the understanding behind the propaganda while encouraging the participation of our readers. Join us at FreedomsPhoenix.com. That's Freedoms with an S, Phoenix.com. FreedomsPhoenix.com, where the revolution between the ears has already matured.